Aleluya. Amen. Frank, take a bit of the bass away. Amen. I trust you are all doing well for our lives. So, um, last three weeks we spoke about secular humanism. And today we are doing a part one of a topic um, I have captioned Exposition on Postmodern Culture. Exposition on Postmodern Culture. Part one for the sake of time, and then another time, probably somewhere in the new year, we would come back and then continue from, from there. Amen. Right. So, because we want to have time to engage in the presentation, I will try and um, run through this one. The slides are not many, so I try and finish so that we can interact. So, Exposition on postmodern culture. Right. So, what is postmodernism? What is postmodernism or postmodernity? What is postmodernism or postmodernity? Um, all right, so I'll go through, and once they are ready, they will be showing the slides. Before we try to describe or explain what it is, let's refresh our memory with our, our test, Colossians 2 verse 8. Colossians 2 verse 8. I would like us to It says that, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic of this world rather than on Christ. Um, Dr. Lube, can you try and present it so that it comes line by line, if you can? Um, so that this, it, the way it is, they will struggle to read all. Yeah. Okay, so Colossians 2 8, we've read that one. We also mentioned the other time, Hosea 4 talks about the fact that if you lack knowledge, you perish. And then Proverbs 4 and verse 7 talks about getting wisdom and getting understanding. You remember those, those quotations? Please, they all are relevant to this discussion. And so Colossians 2, 8, Hosea 4, verse 6, and then Proverbs 4 and 7. So these are our anchor scriptures as we discuss these topics. Right. Now, According to the dictionary of theological terms, postmodernism is a description of contemporary intellectual cultural climate. It is a certain climate which is fueled by intellectualism. That is what it means. Postmodernity what is the climate in which we live where intellectualism and cultural change you know has become the climate and he says it's a stage beyond modernism which was introduced by the enlightenment now that word enlightenment is very interesting it was a movement that enlightenment there, that's why it begins with E, capital E. It was a movement of some intellectuals way back the late 16th, 17th century and all the way through the 18th century. These were intellectuals who came up with ideas. And I will read a bit of that in my book. And this, it, it started in Europe. Enlightenment started in Europe. So, European intellectuals in the late 17th to the 18th century came up with this movement and their emphasis was on reasoning, reasoning and individualism, being an individual person rather than tradition. 
So they were trying to move away from the way things are normally done or accepted by using their reasoning. And remember, they are intellectual. And so they started that movement, which became like modernism. Now what we are discussing is post-modernism. Another group of people have come up, and they have gone beyond what these people started. Hallelujah. And so that is, that I, I'm giving you a background as these things evolve and where we are. So for postmodernism, it is marked by, number one, a rejection of objective truth. They are saying that we cannot say truth is absolute. So truth is relative. Number two, it is marked by the powers of reasoning. Because they have gone to school, they are very educated, they use their brain to analyze and come up with conclusions. They don't care what a book is saying or somebody else is saying. Then the third point is that they, they claim, you know, universality. They have claims of universality. In other words, what they are thinking and what they want to do is accepted by so many people. It's universal. So these are some of the things that marked what we call postmodernism. So in simple terms, postmodernism can be described as an emerging philosophy of absolute truth. You know, in, in, in Christianity, we we stick to absolute truths in the scriptures. The Bible says this, and we go by it. These people are saying no. There is nothing like absolute truth. Truth is relative. If it is good for you, it might not be good for your sister. That is their analogy. Number two, they tolerate pluralistic ideas, views, lifestyles. So postmodernism tolerates all manner of ideas, views, and lifestyle. They are saying that, look, whatever view anybody has, let the person have it. Whatever lifestyle somebody wants to have, let the person have it. Whatever ideas you have, it is fine. Number three, accommodation of issues relating to the marginalized and the minorities. So they accommodate all these marginalized, the so-called marginalized or the minorities. And so they support people like the LGBTQ community. They support people who wants to do the weird thing that society kind of abhors. They support them. So if there's somebody who wants to, for example, excuse me to say, sleep with an animal, that is the person's idea, the person's lifestyle. They support the person. Because put such people in the minority or in the marginalized, so they would go and support such people. Then number four, regard established rules or authority so long as it doesn't fall foul of the law. You see, in society, there are rules that regulate us. And for them, if there is any rule, if there is a rule that is not against any written law, they want to disregard it and have their own way. In other words, they really want to be free, and not be bound by anything. Then, number five, postmodernism offers multi-choice opportunity allowing them to do whatever they please, regardless of what others think. You see? So they are giving society the choice. Look, something, if it is worrying you, just be free. Do whatever you want. So multi-choice opportunity. So if you are pregnant, you don't want it, go and abort it. I mean, be free. Have choice. Don't be boxed into one thing. That is post-modernism. Right? Now let's look at the way they manifest their ideas. Manifestation of postmodern ideas. Number one, postmodern ideas in league with popular culture are manifested mainly through the following. One, the media. The almighty media. We all know the media. Radio, TV, internet, you know, social media, etc. The media. Number two, they manifest their ideas through fashion. Number three, through sexuality. Number four, through music. 
You see, so all these channels, we are going to take them one by one and break down and uh, drill down a bit in them. See, so due to these channels of manifestation, young people are the most affected by postmodernism. And we are all here, I think all of us here are young, including myself. I see myself as a very young man. I've not started crying. And so everything that is going on affects me. And it's so true. By the time we are through, you realize that it affects almost everybody. You know, so that is how they manifest their ideas. So let's, let's look at the media. Now, the media, when we, we pick the radios, for example, radio stations or the FM stations, the proliferation of radio stations is in almost every country across the world makes it a very powerful tool for postmodern ideas to be propagated with ease. And let me give you just a typical example. In Ghana, we are only 32 million. We have over 300 radio stations. So you can imagine, here in the UK, you are just about 69 million. We have BBC national channels one to five, then you have BBC 40 local stations. Then you have over 250 commercial stations. So if you compare that one to a population of 69 million, compared to Ghana, over 300 radio stations, we have only 32 million. So it tells you that whether you like it or not, you'll listen to the radio. It's all over the place. And now the radio is on phones, it's on iPods, it's everywhere. You don't need to go and buy a radio gadget. And you can listen to the radio. And so it, it, it gives me an idea that it is easy for these things to be propagated easily. Here in Scotland, you are just about 5.5 million. Way back 20 years ago when I was schooling here, we were just about 5 million. And 22 years down the line, we are still 5.5. I don't know why we are not increasing. What it tells me is that the indigenous are not giving birth. And so the 500,000 I have seen is just probably from immigration or immigration. People coming in, or those of us who are, uh, what do I call it? Who are not, who are not in, in indigenous of the land, but who are now here, we are giving birth. The typical are not. You know, so the population of UK has been stagnant for the past 20 years. That is another conversation for another time. Now, virtually every subject matter is being discussed on radio. Before then, it was a taboo to hear subjects like sex, witchcraft, occultism, atheism, and those things discussed on radio. If I were going up, we never heard anybody come on radio and talk about the fact that he he has a shrine, and he operates a fetish shrine or something. Today, it is common in, in Africa. I don't know about here. But it's so common, now they have the gas to come on TV and tell you that we are multiplying money, we are doing this, we are doing that, all over the place. Postmodernism. Now, the TV, let me go to the TV. Being image-driven, you know, TV, we always sit and watch. Being image-driven, many postmodern people do not like reading. Is it true? They rather fancy watching images on screens, such as the TV, on mobile phones, and on computers. And it's so true. People don't like reading these days. Right, let's move on. By its unraveled immediacy and ability to manipulate viewers, the TV has particularly be, been at the forefront of sending out postmodern ideas everywhere. I don't know if uh, you guys have been observing some of these cartoons on TVs. If you look at the ideas they are trying to share to our toddlers and children, you know, you, you, have, to, you have to be concerned. So, these are all they tried to tell them that the world was not created, you know, and they would do that using, you know, the cartoon approach and share all manner of ideas. And the children would imbibe it because they are sitting watching for hours 
whilst mommy and daddy are busy doing something else. And so if mommy and daddy would try to sit them down once a while in a structured manner and teach them what we believe, put it in them just as our brothers and sisters in Islam are able to do to their children, say that they, even though they are in this country, they will never shift. But we Christians sometimes fail and our children cross carpets. But for them, if you have observed, they will still wear their whatever, go to school, do everything, and still be very, I don't know whether I should call it indoctrination or call it what. Their parents are able to make sure they don't. They don't cross the line. Hallelujah. We can also make sure that our children grow up filled with the Holy Spirit, more powerful than us, so they can take over from us. Hallelujah. Today, we have people who are addicted to TV. In other words, if there's no TV in the house, they can't leave. If they don't watch TV an hour or two in a day, there's a problem. They're addicted to TV. Are you like that? Well, if you're addicted to TV and you are looking at the right things, I don't have a problem. But what are you looking? Despite the numerous benefits TV offers, it has been described by some ministers of the gospel as the devil's box. For the simple reason that it promotes promiscuous lifestyles through programs such as the telenovelas, the mentors, the big brothers, the beauty pageants, sex talks, and many, many more. All these things are discussed on TV. And so somebody is described the TV as the devil's box. Maybe depending on what you are watching, you can also name it something different, isn't it? Hallelujah. I hope you are following closely. Now let's go to the internet. The internet, in spite of the positive contributions the internet has made towards life in this contemporary society, the negative impact can also be felt in Number one, cybercrime. The internet is brought pornography. Sex is just a click away if you're on the internet. Posting of nude pictures and cyber sex on the internet. Promoting celebritism and divism. Now we all know celebrities. Celebrities. Somebody achieves something and then the person is hailed popularized, and then that becomes, the person becomes an icon. Everybody wants to become like him or her, whether good or bad. And divaism is similar. You know, divaism is somebody, uh, normally women, who behave as if they are very special or very important in society. And, and they become a figure everybody is looking up to. Meanwhile, technically, divas were people who were special Oprah singers, women who were female Oprah singers who have achieved, they were divas, but now the celebrities have taken that term or phrase from them and they have added it to their celebrity lifestyle. So these are things that are being promoted by the internet. And then promoting a global postmodern culture in which the Western culture is being displayed as better than any other culture. And so now people sit in Africa, they've never traveled before, but the things they know and do, well, because the world has become a very small global village because of these gadgets that are all over the place. So it is easy for somebody to sit in America and influence a villager in Brahabe you, you, you see? So that, that is the power of postmodernism. Now let's look, look quickly at the mobile phone. The mobile phone has become a very critical tool for all forms of communication. It is now being used for business and for banking transactions, formal office work, etc., etc. Look, the, poor, the mobile phone is so, so critical. If I lose this, my phone, it will be as if be you. you know, it is so critical for me that it will worry me for days. It's, it's not like one, but the kind of information I have on it and what I use it to do. Okay, but if you take the other side of it, that is where, where our problems are the other side of the mobile phone. Almost
all age brackets uses the mobile phone. Have you, have you observed that? Almost, a, almost all age brackets. The old men, my mother is 86, still using mobile phone. I call her, we talk. 86, they got the phone here then. And then the child, the children here, toddlers, six months, one year. We do the cartoon, put it there, sit it there, they sit there, there and they are laughing, they are smiling. Everybody's using mobile phone. So you see, it cuts across all age brackets. That is why if the devil wants to use that tool, it can be very effective. Now, the negative side of the mobile phone include number one, spreading lies. Spreading lies. Number two, promoting phone sex. Sometimes you are there before you say Jack, something has popped up on your phone. And before you look at it, it's a nude picture from where, where you, you just can't control these things. I don't know. Then facilitating or contributing to uh, motor accidents. Some of us still driving, still want to click, do something before you say Jack, something has happened. And then it's the tool that lures young girls into promiscuous lives. And this one, I pray that our young men and women will be very careful. Sometimes you'll be there and then you get a message. Somebody introducing him or herself and telling you this, that, that, that. I, I don't know. IT people help us. Sometimes I don't know why these things can just come on our phone when we don't, it's not permitted them. You know. And it can even be used to assist robbers, assist thieves, mobile phone. Five robbers can use mobile phone to communicate and plan a plot and do something. So these are the negative sides of the mobile phone. Now let's look at the newspapers and the magazines. The negative aspects of the newspapers and the magazines, they also promote pornography. They spread sensationalism. The story could be true, but a reporter will take the story and garnish it and add pepper and okra and whatever and send the story such a way that when you read it, you either palpitate or something. You know, a little truth is in it, but the way they, 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 they present it, you know, brings sensation. Then sometimes they spread falsehood and then unsubstantiated stories. These are all the negative side of newspapers and magazines. And our journalists and writers are fueling these ones. And then, again, newspapers and magazines, they encourage celebratism, divism, and others that I've just mentioned. Now let's look at the effect of postmodernism on the youth. Thankfully, my slides are not many because I want to finish in the next five minutes and then I want us to interact. The effect of postmodernism on the youth. We are all young people here, so this one effect on us. Number one, sex-related vices. What are some of them? Sex-related vices. Gang rape. Uh, child sex abuse, sex trafficking, all manner of things are happening. These are all, you know, effect of postmodernism on the young people. Because we are able to, we, we've, we've bought into the idea that you can be free, you should not be restricted, do what you please, so long as it is not against the law, even though some of these things are seriously against the law. And yet, these are the negative effects. Number two, crimes. Drug abuse and occultism. I believe we all know what is occultism. Another time we'll talk about occultism. Occultism is, is a, I have a, occultism is a belief or in the study of the action or influence of the supernatural or supernormal powers. So if you believe in, you know, in the supernatural or you study it, practice it, that is occultism. All these things are effect of postmodern, you know, ideas on the young people. Then the third one here, disobedience to parents. Remember, I told you that they want everybody to be free. So young people to have picked that, and they think that parents that are strict or, or that are trying to guide them, they have no right to do that. And unfortunately, for those of us living here in this in this part of the world, it is even worse because they have been, they have managed to empower them such that when they decide to do something and you say no and they are not happy, the system helps them to move out. 
So long as they are 16 plus, they can move out. So if you are becoming a street dad and your, your daughter or your son is not happy, you will find a way to move out. And that is the end of your child. He's gone. So these are the challenges of postmodernism. Then indecent dressing. What's for this one? They will dress and tell you that how they want to dress. And remember I told you that everything must be pluralistic. Allow anything and anything to happen. That is the whole idea. So if somebody decides to wear trousers, one here and the other one is here, don't say the person is mad. No, don't, the person is not mad. That is the person feeling what the person wants to do. You know, in the same dressing. Um, recently, there was something called Otofista. You remember? Y young man, you remember? Is it still there or is it gone? All right. Another one will come. You know, Otofista came and, and, and I hear it is gone. It will come back. And, and other things will go and come. And for the ladies, I don't know what came and gone, but you know, showing of mini skirts, hot mini, and uh, and was showing of your cleavage, and, and you know, and 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 they hide behind a word called feminism, you know, boosting your your your, your confidence, you know, and, and they will tell you that when you do that, you know, it makes you feel confident and stuff like these are all lies, and so you 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 are showing part of your breast. And you feel that makes you confident, or I mean, what, come on. But this is where we are. This is where we are. So let, let's 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 watch it. Right. Um, where am I? Right. The use of profane language and profane music. Profane language. I, I, it surprises me that even here in the West, even the intellectuals. Some of them cannot even string one sentence together without using the F word. It baffles me. You would think that, oh, as for those who have schooled, maybe for them, they should be decorous a bit in how they speak. But when they're angry, oh, come on. They would, they, I mean, one sentence and they will use an F word. And, and, and I know some guys I used to work with. One F word, one re, uh, correct word. One F word, one correct word. All of, that is how they speak. I, I'm sure you, are, you, are, you have met them. The use of profane language and profane music. Now, profane music is allowed. I mean, some, some of the music, when you hear them, they're like, what? You know, but that is where we are. Now, the effect of postmodernism on the youth. Quickly, let me finish this one, and then that will be last but one slide. Desire for pleasure, fun, and instant gratification. That is what we are looking for. Everybody wants pleasure. Fun, fun, fun. Anything that will bring a little pain, a little discipline, no. Fun. And then instant gratification. You will prefer to be happy right now and, and dare what will happen tomorrow. Instead of suffering today and having a sustainable, happy ending, no. You want it now. So if you go to where I'm coming from, something called Sakawa, the young guys finish school. They don't care taking their mother, their sister, whoever, to go and get the money and just have fun. To see them riding their uh, Benz, saloon cars, and the latest Hondas. As if that is what the, 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 the Juju told them to buy. That is all they're buying. It is, it is the, the Benz E300, C classes, that, that. And you see them drive. Every weekend you see them all over. They, they, they drive in groups and they dress and impress their colleagues who are struggling. So instant gratification. Then the quest for the latest. It is called neophilism. If you have the quest for the latest, and you, be able, you want to have one. That is not, it's not good. If you have it, fine. But if it becomes a quest, as a way, yeah, something will happen to you. Then you know you something is wrong with you. It's called neophilism, the quest for the latest. You know, please, these are all things to do with postmodernism. If it is the latest and it is good and you have the money, please go for it. No problem. If you don't have the money, don't fret. Live your life. I hope you are, I hope you are getting the balance. Right. 
The quest for unrestrained freedom, easy life. I've mentioned that. The quest for you know, Munyami. That is the that, that is how the, the, the society is now finding it. Let us be. Let us be free. Easy life. And then relativism. If you tell them this is wrong, we tell you it is wrong to you. For me, it's not wrong. So relative relativism means that you know a doctrine or a teaching that says that knowledge, truth, and morality is not absolute. That is relativism. So what do you know that you think is, is the truth? Um, I, it, from my view, it is not, it's not the truth. That's it. Then the desire for quick money and materialism, some of the effects of postmodernism. Then involvement in occultism, I've mentioned that, that already. Now, the effect of postmodernism on morality, this is where the challenge you know, against our faith can, can really come out. So, emerging sexually related vices, I've mentioned that. So, this is affecting morality generally. And of course, these are all things that are against scriptures. So, gang rapes, ritual killings, etc. Number two, indecent dressing, I've mentioned that already. These are all effects of postmodernism on morality. Then, corruption, almighty corruption. Maybe in this part of the world, you don't hear much of corruption. But in Africa, corruption is a big problem. We are fighting it. We don't know how we will win. Corruption. In all manner of spheres, it's not only political corruption alone, but corruption everywhere. Even the artisans. The artisans will charge you based on where you called him, the car you are driving, the home you live in. And then he would fabricate stories and make sure that you have become his or her bank, that he will milk you, ah, so he will do the work, and you have to call him again. The mechanics are doing every artisan, if they don't fear God, they are all corrupt, but every time we are looking at the big men at the top, but corruption cuts across every sphere. Immorality within the clergy, even church leadership, has become challenged by postmodernism. Immorality. I'm sure you've heard in some of the stories when you hear, you are even surprised. But it's happening. Then promotion of pleasure-oriented celebrations, such as Val's Day, beauty pageants, and all those things. Why do they fund these things? Even this Christmas. Christmas. Look at them already. Look at the, look, look at the community. You see the way they are funding Christmas as if they know what it is. And as if they are going to celebrate it with the meaning and the mindset that you and I have. Unfortunately, no. They only are celebrating it because it is just to them, it's just a day where you have to display Christmas tree, this, 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 buy techie, have a family meeting, eat big, drink big, and that's it. You know, so these are some of the things that we have had on on, on, on postmodernism. The last Promotion of alcoholism, reverie, licentiousness, indiscipline. These words are not, they appear big, but all they basically mean, for example, reverie is wild parties. You know, young people, when they have money, they throw parties, and the party is wild because girls and guys will meet, they will over drink, and do all manner of evil stuff. That is reverie. Then licentiousness. That one, if somebody doesn't have restraint for sex, the person is licentious. So you, you lack sexual restraint. You, you just can't control yourself. When you feel like it, no matter what, you want to go for it, whether it is legal or illegal. Licentiousness. The glorification in sin, such as exhibitionism. You are exhibiting something. And here it is relating to sex, or exposing your genital organs so that you become sexually excited or having a strong desire to be observed by other people when you are engaged in a sexual activity. Just think about it, how weird it looks, and yet that is somebody's excitement, exhibitionism, that I want to 
sexual encounter with somebody, but others must be watching us. These things are happening. And then voyeurism, that is the other side of it. That one too is like involving yourself or becoming sexually aroused by watching somebody who is not suspecting that you are, he, he or she is being watched. And then as you watch the person, you become sexually aroused. And so for those of us who watch movies, sometimes you will see somebody go to hide a camera in somebody's bedroom. Then he sits in his house somewhere, and then when the person is having that fun, he's sitting in his house watching it, and as he watches, he becomes sexually aroused. That is voyeurism. So all these things are happening because of postmodernism. And it's, it's, it's impinging on our morality as Christians or even as a society. And that is where uh, we as a church would have to be aware of. Then profane songs, I've mentioned that already. Then disrespect of authority. authority. Now young people in Africa because of the political challenges or the economic challenges can just insult anybody anytime they don't care. And they will go on social media or YouTube and even record the insult and insult the person and insult whoever and put it there on social media. Disrespect for authorities. It is now the order of the day. People can just say anything to anybody. They don't really care at all. And so we, we have a challenge as, 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 as a Christian community. The last but not the least, indecent language. I think I also mentioned that. So, brethren, these are the effects of postmodernism. The kind of climate in which we are, the things that intellectuals are pushing, trying to suppress Christianity. And these things, because they are in the environment, you and I don't have direct control. So whether we like it or not, the things will keep coming. What we have control over is our body, our mind, our thought pattern, and how we infuse that in our children so that as they grow, they will not see those things in the society as the norm. We want to make sure that we also don't see it as the norm, so that we, we dare to be different and pray and challenge our kids to also grow and dare to be different. Otherwise, when they don't see what you are doing as the right thing, they will think you are the old one out. And what others are doing is the right thing. I remember very well, before we do Q&A, Q um, my son Banaman, those of you who know him, when he was 10 years, one day we were coming to church. He said, Dad, can I stay at home? I said, why? He didn't say anything. Then we came to church. Then we went back home. Then something prompted me to go to his room and ask a question. So I went to his room. I said, Banaman, why don't you want to go to church? Then he sat for a while, and then he goes like, uh, that it, it's like when I go to church and I go to school on Monday, everybody will ask me, Banaman, how was your weekend? And then I will say, uh, I, I went to church. Then they will all say, church? Then they will say, they went to the rugby with their father, they went to the pub, they went to fishing, they went this. And so everybody does something else. And for him, it is always church every Sunday. So the thing was getting, getting on his nerves. And so he wanted to stay at home. At that point, I realized, hmm, something must be done. So I sat him down, started teaching him that, look, what they are doing, that is their, that's their right. For you and I, we are Christians. And I have to talk. I know at 10, age 10, he probably wouldn't understand all the things I was sharing. You know, but at least I have to make the effort and let him know that that is them. We are Christians. And we serve God. You know, so, you know, I'm just sharing this so that when you, 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 you are getting there, please, it is a hard work for parents. It's not easy for us to raise our kids to become like us or better than us in this environment. So let's, let's be aware. The whole essence of this is that we are aware that what is going on is just not, not, it's not just normal. Something is fighting Christianity. And you and I would have to arise in prayer, in the knowledge of the word, so we can teach ourselves and teach our children. 
May God bless us. Amen.